So if I could have everyone's attention, um, we will uh, begin the meeting uh, close to being on time at uh, 1 o'clock. And although it's not on the agenda, if you would all join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just to kick off our meeting today, because it's been quite some time since we last convened, if we could perhaps just go around the table and introduce the, the sitting members. Uh, I'm David Alfin, I'm Mayor of the City of Palm Coast, and I will be your chair for today. I'm Cheryl Macero, Flagler County School Board Chair. Colin Conklin, uh, Vice Chair of the Flagler County School Board. Sally Hunt, Flagler County School Board. I'm Pete Young, City of Bunnell, City Commissioner. I'm John Rogers, City of Bunnell, Vice Chair. Dave Sullivan, Flagler County Board of County Commissioners. Andy Nance, Vice Chair of the Fire County Commissioners. William Woodson, the staff to the ILA Committee. Dave Freeman, Chief of Operations for Flagler County Schools. Uh, Chris Wilson, Council to Flagler County Schools. Jane Mealy, uh, Commissioner of City of Flagler Beach. James Sherman, Commissioner of City of Flagler Beach. Nick Clemens, Council of City Council. And it's my understanding that all members are present today, Mr. Woodson? Correct. So very good, perfect. Again, thank you all for attending um, you know, this special meeting and getting here and being timely. Um, it's uh, my understanding and, and our understanding that this committee has been formed for the purpose of um, um, administrating the interlocal agreement between each of our municipalities and the school district and watching over all of the contents that are inside of that agreement which has been signed by each of the municipalities that are attending. Does everybody else, does everyone have that same uh, understanding of our purpose? Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, good, that makes it very easy. <laughs> easy. Because so it, at this point in time, to move right along, we're going to have uh, uh, Mr. Whitson go ahead and uh, take the reins and provide the information that we are gathering for today. Mr. Mayor, you want to go over the minutes first? Uh, that'd be fine. So you all have received uh, the minutes in advance of today's meeting. I would ask if um, there are any changes or corrections to the minutes that were uh, uh, sent. Motion to approve the minutes of 9-8-2022. So I have a motion to approve. Second. And a, and a second as well. Any further discussion? All in favor, please uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? And uh, we don't use a clerk, so uh, Mr. Whitson, for recording the minutes of this meeting, yourself and staff will be doing that for us? Yes, sir. So you have the count for the vote? We do, sir. The floor is yours. Thank you. Well, good afternoon to everyone. Go to the next slide. Um, what I thought what we would do this afternoon is try to set um, the table for what we're going to do today uh, with the ILA Oversight Committee. Uh, just to bring you up to speed, um, as you recall, um, the ILA Oversight Committee meeting was supposed to be earlier in the year, but it was delayed because we wanted to complete the Davis demographic study. The first part of that study was done and delivered to the school board and to all of the uh, members here. Uh, we coordinated with your staffs um, through multiple calls and email traffic. So basically that report and the data there is out there. Uh, it's on the this video recording of the workshop is on the school board website. So um, we're gonna go over the report, but kind of a, a condensed version, the Reader's Digest version. Um, but if you want to see the full uh, presentation that is on the school board website, it's uh, date August 15. Um, so basically now we want to turn our attention to the ILA process. Um, I have to commend this group. Uh, the last time you met, you just approved your minutes. Uh, you were, how's this going to go? Who's doing what? Um, how we're going to make this work in Flagler County 
think you did a, an exceptional job and I have to tip my hat to all the attorneys, which is a rare thing, no, uh, <laughs> to all the attorneys uh, for the excellent job they did in writing a document that we could administer and, and work with. So um, all those involved, we appreciate that. Um, I have been brought on board to work with all the local governments and I must say, uh, again, more bragging, uh, everybody has just been exceptional to work with. And I hate to call out names, but I will say Taylor Phillips from the GIS in the county. That guy's amazing. Uh, we're actually working with him because he runs the 911 addressing system to utilize some of that data in our reports going forward and try to make a better tool to do prediction and forecasting with. So really appreciate all the cooperation from every municipality and from the county and of course our own staff. So that's kind of where we are. The working group met over the summer. Um, I'm wearing out their email. Uh, I'm calling them. I actually talk to every city in this county at least twice a week or more. So we're having good cooperation, good communication, and now that sets the stage for today. We have drafted, and it's in the packet that we sent, Mr. Mayor, uh, a report, which is section 2.4 of the ILA requires that we do an annual report. I put a draft stamp on it because it's not my prerogative to approve it, but uh, we feel like it checks all the boxes and we feel it's appropriate and adequate to meet the terms outlined in the ILA. That will be an item later on the agenda, which you all will uh, have a chance to review and speak your mind. And if you can approve it today, great. If you want to take it back to your jurisdictions, fine. We'll, we'll work through that in, the, in that discussion. Um, the next thing is that um, the working group will be meeting next after this committee meeting and it goes into the mechanics of the ILA and I won't get buried in the weeds but basically everything uh, in terms of the impact fee amounts and things like that get triggered from the October account of students. That's the official count that goes into the state of Florida and it's where everybody's settled and counted in and then we use that data to begin um, working from in terms of making the uh, the uh, the system work with the impact fees. Ignore that call. It's probably spam. Um, so then from there, once the working group meets, we will then review everything with the ILA partners. And uh, later on in the agenda today, we'll have an opportunity to hear from your staff if they have any comments or thoughts that the group needs to consider. So next slide. As I mentioned, and it's in your packet, the ILA um, meetings were delayed to receive the Davis uh, demographics forecast. Uh, the great thing about Davis uh, is that they had a relationship with the school board, uh, and we uh, basically charged them to do an updated study. So, next slide. Mr. Winston, if I may just, sir, just to, uh, we're making such progress just to clear the air. Was there an administrative issue with the delay? Was it a, a data collection? What, what was the reason for the delay? It was the extensive data collection involved. And um, I think the contract was initiated in February. And so it just took time to do it. And um, we met with a working group and talked with everybody. Everybody was of consensus that that was an important um, milestone to wait on that information. Okay, so something that we should be aware of for the future so we don't suffer a delay or just uh, a well, stance. Uh, I understand your question and what we are doing at the school board is obviously we have this data now, uh, but we are putting in place some new tools okay. to be able to accelerate that process a little bit quicker. Good enough, thank you. Sir. So um, I don't know if anybody remembers the days before the pandemic when, and I, I loved it, you know, when you, you go around to a buffet, you know, and you take this piece and you take that piece and you make a meal out of it. Well, that's basically what Davis did. As I said, they had a relationship with the school board and they had actually in their database spatial uh, GIS data on every student, where do they live. 
and they were able to take that data and then I worked with every jurisdiction here uh, and just you know we went back and forth and then sent that information over to Davis on what all of the proposed developments were future development were and of course they had a sense of what was already on the ground then they took that information and cross tabbed it with future demographics for example birth rates mobility rates there's a some, something I was been learning about in the census data called the American Community Survey where they actually take a look at you know your tax filings and different things that, that happen out and they get reported to the state and federal government and they can figure out who's moving around and so they took that data plus birth rates and other kinds of statistics and marry it with the other GIS database and then they were able to do from there they were able to do a forecast and so that's why uh, it was important to get this information because it's a snapshot in time you have so many different moving parts here you have people building homes you have people moving in you have people um, taking vouchers and going to different places you have charter schools home schools all kinds of different variables moving around and so it's important that we gather as much information as we can to get a realistic benchmark of what's happening in the community next slide well I love pictures and this is a GIS picture and this was another advantage of uh, contracting with Davis was they had that geo reference data that I mentioned earlier as far back as 2016 and this is a, a picture of all of the spots where the kids lived and uh, that kind of thing in 2016 if you go to the next slide you'll see that they compared that with the data they had in 2022 and it's very similar so the development patterns are kind of consistent and it's it gives us a good way to compare that information and you can see the the red areas are the hotter areas you may see a little more growth happening a little more intense in Bunnell and to the south of the county but you know will that trend continue I don't know like I say it's a snapshot in time next slide <coughs> what I was doing most of the summer uh, since I've come on board is working with your staff so again I cannot say how much I appreciate their time all their attention they've been great um, and we basically uh, put into the system with, with Davis uh, the information and this was early July we had to cut it off early to mid July we cut off the data there's been more developments come in since that cut off but what they were able to capture was 80 new residential developments tracking over almost 14,000 uh, residential units either apartments condos single-family <coughs> homes uh, those kind of things being built in the community and then of course <coughs> uh, they noted a couple of hot spots in uh, Bunnell and then of course in uh, along Old Kings Road um, there is some development there that is existing and then proposed in the future and we'll get into that later on next slide so basically remember I mentioned the geo reference data they actually could take the address of the student and place it in because they gathered the additional information about what kind of unit was being built and they were able to cross tab it over a single family home over a multi-family home over a park that kind of thing and then from that based on empirical data they were able to basically say okay for every 100 single family homes built in the community rule of thumb is you're going to get about 23.9 students or 24 students for every 100 single family homes built that's pretty important information so for us to track yes sir may i i'm yes, sorry sir. just to keep the questions pertinent so that number obviously is very important that number is a composite from a national basis, from it's a state actually, basis, from a regional basis, from a local basis. No, that's Flagler County data. It is our data. 24.9. Yeah. 
Yeah, 24.9. I'm sorry, 20, right. It's 24. Yeah. So basically, they took this where the child lived, what kind of home they lived in, or, or structure was being built, and they were able to come up with this table of ratios. So that's actual empirical data about what's happening in Clark County right now, as of that point in time when they met. Next slide. Okay, then basically the student forecast. This gets kind of complicated, and my friend Dave here knows more about this than I do because I'm trying to be uh, playing catch up. But it basically takes a look at what all the students are that we have to educate. There's charter schools, which is not the responsibility of the school board, but of course they're counted by the state of Florida, right? Because you have the voucher system and all of that. And then you have homeschool, and you have people, um, maybe they have a medical problem and they're attending from home those kinds of things. They took all of those categories and did a forecast, and this was uh, the chart that came out with some of the numbers. And we can get into that later on if you want. <coughs> Next slide. So then we said, well look, it's not fair to the school board to take a look at all of these students, but if we, you know, if they go to charter school, there's over 600 kids that went to charter school, that's not counted against our brick and mortar facilities. So we took a look at, okay, what is our seat capacity? Uh, how many desks do we have? You know, how, how many student stations do we have? And for your elementary schools, it looks like we're in pretty good shape. It, this chart doesn't count your charter schools, but basically it looks like 6879 was the total capacity of elementary student stations in like a county. And you can see their forecast of you know, how that works. So we're in pretty good shape when it comes to elementary school students. Next slide. Middle school, that's a little different uh, situation where the line begins to cross in the next five, six years uh, where we're running out of student station uh, seats as opposed to the forecast of physical places to put them. And this counts all your portables and things like this. Next slide. Then we did the same analysis, so we have apples to apples, right, for the high school. And you see the little bump there? That is where we added, uh, the school board directed the uh, contractor to build on Matanzas, so that buys us a little more time. I think that was over a $20 million project uh, to pick up those 366 seats. But basically, that buys us a little more time until you're looking at somewhere again in the same or similar high horizon as your middle school of 2028, 20, 2029 20, that would be out of space. Next slide. So basically we took all of this information and did a forecast and um, it shows pretty clearly that we're gonna need new schools. The question is what size <coughs> schools, maybe where those schools are and how we can best uh, spend the public's money in, as a wise steward. And um, I think we have a great board here and a great school board and they're gonna work through that. But the good news is we have a window. We have a horizon of next five to six years to make those kinds of critical decisions. Next slide. So again, just to tie a bow on it, and again, the Davis demographic presentation was 25 slides and it's all on video, so I thought I would spare you that and just kind of go to the bottom line and take a look at the fact that we are increasing in students somewhere between a thousand students in the next four to five years. If you look at the 10 year forecast, we're looking at 2,000 to 2,600 students in the next 10 years. And um, it's you know expected to grow. Now, what's interesting is that some of this growth is coming from the new housing that is coming in and being built. Some of this group growth is already built in. Uh, it was interesting, the birth rates are up in Flagler County compared to the nation. So some of that growth is just natural growth. And then you also have growth that's coming in from outside of the county. Perhaps people moving from South Florida or from other states and those kinds of things. So again, just to get to the bottom line, the elementary capacity is in pretty good shape until we get to 29, 30 somewhere in that time frame, uh, but the middle school and the high school capacity, 
we need to be looking at that on a shorter planning horizon in terms of maybe uh, finding land, uh, figuring out where the facility would be, what kind of facility, what size facility, those kinds of things. And that kind of, at the end of the day, was the bottom line, if you will, for the Davis report. Okay, let's go to the, I think that's the last slide. So now, Mr. Mayor, we go back to the agenda and we'll look at uh, discussion of the oversight report and then, of course, uh, what you would like to do, what's your preference on the draft ILA report that's in front of you. So um, would you suggest that we take a moment now to ask questions about the data and the forecast that has been presented in summary form? I think this would be an appropriate moment for yes, that. Sir. Mr. Dance, would you like to kick off? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, in the forecasts, looking looking over the next five years, it's a pretty steady increase of 150, 200 students until we get to 27, 28, we take a big jump. And that I'm curious as to the methodology that is resulting in the bigger jump farther down the forecast because as you take a look at the bar graphs that follow the chart um, the middle school and the high school become problematic at the same time where we take significant jumps in 27 and 28 so just curious as to that methodology later down the road um, when we ask that same question uh, to the Davis demographics folks they said that there's kind of a a national trend uh, they do these studies all the time and you know when you build in the home you're looking at you know maybe four or five years before you start seeing any kind of student generations that's part of it um, and so there's kind of this delay uh, some of the forecast that has a lot of units coming in in 26 and 27 you have to build the infrastructure you know the water the sewer lines all those kind of things so the rooftops don't start coming up until those years so it's kind of a combination of that factor in terms of timing as to why that uh, figure is that way okay. so so what you're saying basically is that new families younger families are moving in they don't have children but then they have children so you're looking at six years of development of I think that's what I'm getting out of that that and plus the fact that sometimes these units will actually be available for sale until five or six years, you know, when they, the infrastructure is in and they are actually, you know, putting the home up. Like we have uh, plenty of forecasts showing units coming in that are phased. Uh, so they, they get the approval from the city, but then it may be three, four years before they get everything set and can sell a home. And it, it's and it's the forecast basically when we are getting our applications from the developer and when we reach out to developers we ask them to tell us how many homes each year that you think that you're going to bring on board and so that was tied into this this study and a follow up have we have we looked at the current trend of number of families moving in versus retirees moving in what's the current ratio because it sounds like you're using national data to forecast that instead of flagler data on who's actually moving in yes sir we we actually pulled the bieber report which is the um the business um, bureau of economic research for florida state of florida and uh, they are actually showing numbers similar to the davis forecast and yes some of the data was from the american community survey which is national but we also pulled the, the Beaver report and it's showing um, trends that are similar in terms of age and demographics of people. If, if, if I may, just as a footnote, because Mr. Dance and I just heard this yesterday at, at our TPO meeting, I would look to city staff for a moment. So the Beaver report seems to lag by yes. a couple years in terms of trending and, and, and data. How do you all use the Beaver figures when you're doing your forecasting? Are you using that as a hard number or can you help me there? Yes, 
Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Jason DeLorenzo, for the record. Um, you know, over the years, the report has kind of been all over the place, right? Uh, at a time, there was a time when you only used the mid, but we were closer to the high, and there's been times where, you know, the mid, and we weren't even near the low. So you're right, it lags. We, you know, I don't know, Jose, uh, we don't use it a, a ton for when we're looking out. I mean, it, we include it in our report as, as you know, what's, it's the best data we have to work with. Okay, but and, and I'm, not, that, I'm yeah. not trying to discredit the number. I guess my point is that, you know, throughout all of these discussions in uh, Flagler County and, and, and the city of Palm Coast as well, of course, are special. I mean, I'm going to have to say that we are at a unique moment in time. I think we've been there for a while. And I do get a little bit nervous or challenged when my 27.9, if I got the number right, yet, whatever it is, gets pulled in and, and becomes sort of a, 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 a bricks and mortar fact. I'm not, I'm not okay with that until we have some either grassroots or boots, boots on the ground who really is moving in. And, and um, you know, our community is not that big that I don't think that we should be able to find a way to really understand who's coming or we won't be deceived into thinking who's really going to come here. It's like I'm not of a mind, as much as I would like to be, that we are going to have an army of young families getting ready to have a whole bunch of kids coming into the area. I wish I'm doing everything I can to make that happen, but I don't feel it yet. And I don't know how anybody else, this is just a, one opinion. So uh, let's, let's go around the table, if, if that's okay with everybody. Uh, Commissioner Sullivan. Yeah. Uh, Basically, just to follow up on, on Mr. Vance, uh, a couple of things, just in general, for us. Last year, we, we did a very good job on, on building the ILA. We went from having nothing since 2007 to a reasonable approach. We, we, and we, we, addressed, we addressed impact fees, concurrency, and even the half-cent sales tax was, was re revoted in. I think it was, it was a monumental year for doing that. The number of pupils did not reach the 500 uh, number of change, where we would want to go back and change the impact fees or what we had agreed to last year. That was one of the basic things on the ILA. There's no doubt in my mind that there are a lot of buildings being built and a lot of houses, but I, I tend to think that since the ILA has only been in effect essentially for 12 months now, this is the first school year we're coming, it seems to be going to be very hard to change what was excruciatingly difficult to get to an agreement on the ILA. It took, it took a last minute a change to actually get it done. So when I see that, and now there are other changes that we probably have not taken into consideration, and that's this, the, the, the state legislature has made some changes as far as vouchers and, and, and a number of other things, and we have the whole thing of homeschooling, private schooling, and how those all get counted into the factors. So I think we're actually in a pretty good place. This is a you know, pretty good place right now. And I don't deny we don't have all these houses going to be built. But um, a lot of them are not going to be for uh, for people that have little kids. Um, so that's kind of where I think we are. And I think, I think with the state making some actual laws that, that affect the way the school population is going to be. I don't think the studies that we see right now have taken those changes into effect. That's it. A couple things. Um, that 24 uh, students for every 100 homes being built seems a little low to me. Uh, you know, just you know, running the math through my head, you know, that's a lot of homes for, for a little number, number of students. And, uh, and then, uh, on, your, on the uh, high school, middle school, you know, uh, it has to be built. Uh, I, I would be of, of the opinion, you know, to maybe combine them both on one set of, you know, property. You know, it would, uh, it would definitely, uh, you know, with middle school students coming in, and then they're going to go to the high school and put them more familiar with the with the uh, area and the landscape and stuff, and it would probably cost the uh, taxpayers uh, less money. As uh, combining them on one one piece of property. Pete, uh, 
back in 2006, I was on the board of the commissioner, and um, we had a, a big growth in Flagler County to the point that we were putting kids in portables, and um, we were ready to build uh, schools. And then all of a sudden, the economy took a dive, and all the kids were leaving, and we didn't build those schools. That probably wasn't the time we should have built the schools because it would have been cheaper. Um, and, I, and I've been on boards at that time on what, do, what does Flagler County want? Do they want an uh, industrial county? Do they want a college town county? Do they want uh, shopping centers? And I don't know if that board still exists, but I could never get an answer on what does Flagler County really want? Is it going to be a, a retirement community on coast, which back in 74 when, when I moved here, that's what it was. But then all the retirees were wanting their kids to come down here and live. There's no jobs here. And uh, we, I don't know if you're taking it for good. We need, we need jobs if, if you're going to bring people, young people with kids. Um, that's what kind of that in the economy kind of scared them away with their kids. So I don't know if this, this um, these figures are even right as far as in the future, especially the next 10 years. Sure, I, I thank you for your comments. So you bring in another aspect, which I failed to mention before. So just a, a footnote. So um, Davis's <clears throat> attention to the efforts of the county and the city on economic development, I think, play into the commissioner's comments. So not understanding or not including what our economic development planning looks like are critically important, because you're right. Uh, if there's no jobs or houses or whatever, those three legs of the stool don't exist. And, and you know that changes the, inter the forecasting of the numbers. So That's thank, it. You. Uh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I well, I want to say thank you, Mr. Young. You really spoke to um, a lot of what I have uh, talked about. Um, is the fact that Flagler County is an ecosystem, and Mayor Alton, you and I have had this conversation that retirees don't want to bust their own tables. They don't want to do their own dental work. Um, for retirees to have a comfortable life, they need working people. Working people have kids, and you know this county needs to be able to accommodate everybody so that everybody has a good quality of life here in Flatbed County, right? So I really appreciate your comments. Um, I think that leads into something else we have a board, uh, we as a board have talked about, and I would love a conversation not just on numbers and, and what the need is, but what do we want our county to have it, uh, from an educational standpoint? I know um, I come from Bentonville, Arkansas. There's a school for the arts. Um, that is more of a secondary school, that if your child is more arts focused, um, that, you know, so I would love not only to talk about seats available, but uh, uh, Cheryl and Colleen know we've also talked about do we want some smaller schools? Um, so maybe it's kind of a both and conversation of not just seats, but um, the, the type of schools that we have. So um, anyway, those are just Mayor Alton, some of my Thank you. thoughts. Fine. Just a couple of clarifications and questions, I guess. When we talk about um, the 500 additional students, would that count come from October? Because we said we were looking at the October count, right? So I wonder, we're having this meeting now, but we're not going to have the October count until October. So we won't know if we've made the 500 threshold or not till then. So just food for thought and consideration, do we need to either have an additional meeting after that October count, or is this meeting time frame set by statute, and do we consider moving it if it's not set by statute? So let's let's answer the first question. I'm not aware of any statute no. that requires a date, but okay. certainly open to comments or opinions. I mean, because this is a new. It's an automatic, right? So once okay. that once it's registered. The numbers come back from the state, 
that it's certified is an automatic increase. So I think your question so is, should, should, that, should, okay, that, that trigger, that, should that trigger a a, meeting. another meeting? Yeah. And that, I, that's why I think that there are some important yeah. because we did have okay. specifics. I, I'm seeing, I think, a consensus that should the data um, be should change significantly, we should obviously always be working with the best data that we have. Otherwise, you know, what, what are we doing? So my understanding would be that we all agreed that that would trigger uh, another. Okay, so I, I just, that was a new factor and well said. just kind of curious about that. The um, 24 students per 100, just for additional clarification, is that, I got the impression that that was actual. Yes. So that's not a prediction. No. That's not a um, an assumption. That is actual numbers. That's what the data shows. Okay. So just wanted to make for, sure. For Flagler County. For Flagler County. Um, uh, and uh, if you just uh, yeah. Over what period of time? That was from their last, from their georeferenced. So 2016. Data going today? forward, it was a trend. And then they had so you know, for for an eight year seven eight the, year period the period between 2016 and 2022 they had geo reference okay. data and so they took a look at it and then when they actually took the, the actual count it was months ago yeah. and could I point out that our previous generation rate that we were using for single family homes was 0.213 mm -hmm. and and this is so it's point not, it's not Two, three, nine. Yeah. Uh, so the time frame was the previous. It's a snapshot in time. It was the previous year. It's the previous year. So they take the number, the, the types of houses, where the students living, and it's a math problem. The ILA, sure. the ILA has us. Uh, to Mr. Sullivan's point, has has us doing this every year. Okay. Uh, based on their data, we their current data. I just like a balance sheet snapshot again. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page and understanding that that the 24 is an actual number. Um, the other thing is, I think we all share your concerns about the new uh, state statutes around the count for vouchers and homeschool students. And the the concern that I have is that at any point in time those students could come to Flagler County Schools. And so when we're looking, I know when we had the report, one of the things that I really wanted to look at was how many students are in the county, right? How, not so much Flagler County School District, while that's critically important, how many students are actually in this county? So you're worried about a preference shift. Right, if they showed up tomorrow, on, if the charter school closed and if, you know, the voucher parents were not satisfied and they ended up coming back or the homeschool population took a trend in a different direction are we prepared to handle that influx of students that's just a number I just wanted to that's a concern for us you know uh, for me and I'm and, sure the, the board Dr. Members. Conklin um, that's a good point as we are tracking the number of students in our brick and mortar we're tracking our charter school we're, we're tracking homeschool students we do get data for scholarships um, for the vouchers that's given to us during the count but one thing that we have difficulty tracking is the private school right? yes yeah because they don't have to report to us we do usually get some information from the private schools usually a year later um, and short of us we've tried reaching out to the private schools to give us the, their enrollment data and we'll be doing that before we do the October count to help quantify some of those numbers. And Colleen, not, I, and I, I'm not disagreeing, yeah. but based on the current and the predicted political trends with regard to schools, the risk of a uh, significant movement away from the charter or private programs, I've not seen that ever happen anywhere before. So it would be a it would be a first time. Well, it's new territory for everybody. Yeah. So there's it's, nothing it has, to base there's no it on. There's no history of that ever happening before. There's no history of it going one way or the other way right. because it's brand new to all of us and even brand new to many of the states that are engaged in it. So it could go where you have a larger number of students actually attending homeschool and private schools, right? Which would create a shift. And it could go likewise in the other Either direction. Way, okay. You enough. just, you just, you we don't just don't know. Um, oh. And and just, it, I just wanted to make sure that when we did hit that recession, we had 
built, don't forget, Matanzas High School was a brand new school. We built it during that period of time. Rimfire was a brand new school. We built that in that period of time. Bunnell Elementary School was completely rebuilt, and we built that in that period of time. And that was all due to planning and, and dealing with the quick growth and the new birth. To uh, answer your question, any school that's an associate associated with the Florida High School Athletic Association, I think by October they must um, turn in their total student enrollment um, to uh, be a, a good standing member of the association because they, uh, they by by membership by the student population is whether they're they're uh, one. One A, two, class three, class yeah. four, all the way up. So that that's that a is, good way to get the that's data. That's a good point. That, that that's is, very good. That, that is, um, that's, yeah. that's and just so the community point. knows, vouchers are directly they're from the state to the family. So they. It, but Colleen's right. We have kids in, coming from Flagler County to Volusia County. I coach in Volusia County, and they're driving down to uh, Mangold High School and Seabreeze High School uh, mm -hmm. from from Palm Coast. So they could, in turn, come up from Volusia come over from Palatka or St. John's. And we have that number we somewhere in there where we've got non-residential students. You'll see them in that all forecasted sheets. Those are students that are traveling into the county. Thank you. Cheryl. Uh, basically, I want to support what Dave said because I agree with Dave. As we sit right now, we're good. I think the work that we did last year is evident and we're, we're, we're in a sound position number-wise, okay? And it looks at this particular point, even historically, we're definitely going to do 200 plus every year. It's going to stay that way for a little while. I think the speculation lies within our, our development, obviously. And legislation has a huge part in it. I'm hoping instead of having to go through you know, the, the athletic association that our government is going to understand they need to start pressing. We need to get more results from our private schools to make sure that those kids are still being educated. They may not be ours, but they need to be educated Especially and well and sound. they're getting money from the state of Florida. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So that accountability, I think, is coming. I don't see it tomorrow, but it's coming because we need to verify those those children, even though they're not ours, they're in Florida, they're ours. As when far I, as I, when I do my sales tax every month, I give that, I check that box, and I just turn that into the... That yeah. program where you know for the, for the private schools right, they right. Have, uh, so I think they, I think that'll that? help that's yeah. going to help get us a better understanding of where <laughs> our numbers are as far as the, um, the the development of 25 students 24 25 students for every hundred homes I find it you know we say they're not coming that these are retirees I say there are retirees coming okay but there are young families coming too because the first thing I see being built is playgrounds you look at every one of those developments what do you see Playgrounds. That's true. They're not building those playgrounds so that the 55 and plus can do their activities. Yeah. And, and I, I, won't, I won't debate you, but I will offer just from a professional Go standpoint. Ahead. It's the least expensive amenity that can be, oh, sure. can be put in. <laughs> I agree. Uh, uh, do have but they're coming. And again, I'm not, I, I, I just don't want to. I, I, understand. I don't, don't want to give you full rule there. No, I understand. Put but the brakes on that just a little bit. Okay. I think people would be shocked at how many grandparents are raising, raising kids. kids. Yeah. Yes. So there, yeah. that, yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. an yeah. interesting question. Good. And, okay. and what Ms. Hunt said is true. You know, our seniors do need, we need young employees. We need people that are going to get out there and provide the services that our retirees are demanding and need. You know, I mean, like we, we are pushing um, our medical professional. We have the new hospital. You know, that's not looking for senior applicants. That's looking for new, young professionals. They're not coming alone. They're not coming alone. And that was a good trend that the county has and cities have pushed to keep going. So, you know, our numbers now are sound. We're good. I think when our October number comes in, we're going to get closer to 500 than you think, okay? Seeing and knowing what the schools have been adding. We're going to move over that 200 threshold. I hope we stay close to that 200, 250, as long as we possibly can, because we'll be okay. So I don't see us raising anything in any time soon, but it's going to come. And as far as building goes, it's I, I worry I really worry about the the capacity in both our high schools and our middle schools. Those kids need more space than they actually have. You've seen the reports about the high schools and their uh, hallways. 
just kids transferring. I mean, they're going to play in one way, one way, you go one way on this stairwell, you got to go the other way here because of the volume of students in the halls alone. You know, and Matanzas having the, the additional seats is going to help. It's going to help the high schools. The rezoning helped the elementaries. Otherwise, we'd be talking about elementaries like crazy right now. So that was another big plus. So I'm glad we had that. You know, our middle schools, though, are busting at the seams. And yes, we are investigating future possibilities that we might be able to take a present, a rim fire that is now a you know is now an elementary, make it a middle school because it was designed that way. It was designed to be a flex building. It could go either way. You know, we might do that, and that would save a lot of money right there. But then we got elementary, so we're going to have to build a smaller elementary. Elementaries are cheaper. Elementaries are much cheaper to build. So it makes sense financially for our tax-paying public, okay, and utilize our funds correctly. You know, but high school, a lot's going to depend on the infrastructure of Palm Coast because we need another high school. We don't need it immediately, but 10 years we need to know the high school. And Palm Coast's got to lay the infrastructure down, hopefully on the west end of this town, so we can get a high school up there somewhere. And I think it's coming in time. I know they'll be thinking about those things, but we have to plant the seed now so people are ready to start seeing where is our vision, where do we want to be. We want to be in a high school 10 years down the road, maybe off of Palm Coast Parkway, down that way, at, on the west side over the railroad tracks. Pick That's where we need it. Man. That would be nice. So think about that when you're planning your area. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Councilman Clufus. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm going to skip. I have a comment to make at the end, but, but go ahead. Deal. I think everybody brings up a lot of good points. Uh, the reason that I asked about the 24 students uh, being generated per 100 homes and the date for which that data was referenced against, and I think I heard 2016 to current, and there's no arguing if that's a current snapshot that you, it's mathematics, right? There's no arguing that. But I would just like to, just for point's sake, when I bought my house in 2016, I was in a position where my house was half of what it costs today. Honest to goodness, probably every piece of property in this county costs twice as what it, what it did in 2016. I could have had a family. I can, I can still start a family, but in that position, I was able to start a family. If my home had cost twice as much with an interest rate that's probably burdened also twice as much, it's a very different position in the world of today for individuals who <clears throat> Uh, have some student debt, they have some type of commitments. It's, it's just a different demographic and environment than 2016. I would not argue the data though. That is what it shows, but I would say that there's probably a tailing effect that in today's environment, someone from my professional, professional standpoint wouldn't be able to consider starting a family even though they wanted to if I had to <coughs> have the situation of having a house that's twice as expensive with a higher interest rate. So to your point, uh, I just did the arithmetic. So if you're <coughs> relatively young or a whole lot younger than I am <laughs> and you're starting out on a career and you're able to grab a job that's going to pay you eighty thousand dollars a year okay you will not get yourself a mortgage if that's a single income for a median priced home in the city of Palm Coast okay? so that's I think the tailing effect that Councilman Clufus is, is uh, alluding to it's just a fact that's, yeah. that's where we are right now it's uh, very true it's yeah, ironically, one of uh, the presenter for the Davis reports brought that to our attention because he's got a son who is 27, I believe, living in Minnesota, has a beautiful home and four bedroom home, and one bedroom is his workout room, one bedroom is his office, and one bedroom is his, you know, they're not having children. That and I have a niece that's the exact same way. They are not having children at this point. They will eventually, and, and I, I, it's very true what's happening. Yeah. So, yeah. And thank you for highlighting the inequality of the housing in Palm Coast. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so uh, I actually work in enrollment management, and um, trends are actually showing us nationally that we're going to have an enrollment management cliff. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, I, I understand we're probably an outlier here in this, you know, Florida's a hot place to come, but. Um, th this data, I'm conflicted on the data to be honest with you guys because I'm, I, what I've been told and what I've been seen on the national level is, is that we're going to plateau here, or we're going to start falling off a cliff here around 2027. So just something to put out there and put in everybody's minds that, you know, I'm not saying that we don't need, you know, I, I have a little one that just started kindergarten here, right? So I have a better appreciation for all of this, but I also have to think, I hope we're just not, you know, overreacting just yet on, you know, over, you know, 
be overreacting, I guess, based on some of the current trends right now. That's all I have. Commissioner? Yeah, uh, a, a couple of things I wanted to say. Uh, Flagler Beach has an apartment development that's supposed to start opening up this month. So let's say it's September because we're almost done with August. It'll be interesting to see how many kids come out of. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're opening it building by building, so it won't be the whole Do they have a playground? Uh, no, we they're right across from the park. They're across from the park. Watch yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> we said that we thought that was important to put in some kind of facility. <laughs> that's it. I was kind of giggling to myself when that came up before. And the other thing I wanted to say is, I worked in a very similar school district to Flagler County on Long Island. Demographics were very similar. Which one, by the way? Comac. Yep. So, you know, some richer kids, some poorer kids, mixed race, somewhat, um, all over the board. And we were the fastest growing suburban school district in the state of New York, and then the fastest declining. Within 20 years, we went from one school to 21 schools to eight. Wow. And so whenever I start hearing here, I had written, a, when I first moved here, I had written like a four-page letter to the school board saying, don't build, don't build, because, <laughs> you know, you're going to be stuck with schools. And what we ended up doing to, we sold some schools off, one conveniently burned down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was empty. <laughs> That's good. Um, we reconfigured who went to what school. And so we ended up with K to two schools, three to five schools, six to eight, and, and uh, nine, 12. And so we were able to move the kids around. The K to two schools were adorable. Mm -hmm. The kids didn't have the pressure of those mean fifth and sixth graders uh -huh. to put up with. And it kind of kept the fifth grade, uh, the sixth graders became the babies, and, and that was good because uh, that's the level I taught and they needed to be <laughs> in there. So just different things to think about um, before we just go crazy building. Yeah. Gentlemen, do you have, I have a comment to make, but do you have uh, anything that you need to add right now on this discussion while you're at the table here? No, I mean, we okay. We basically said it's the size, the yep. placement, and okay. Okay, you had, you're in a planning window where you can make some strategic choices. Sure. I would add that yes. the, the, the information that was gleaned uh, from all of your staffs was provided to Davis Demographics. I mean, this this that's where that came from. I just good. Um, I like the placement of the tables and the seating today <clears throat> because the devil's advocate is sitting over there in that corner. So I don't want you to think it's me, but I have a question to ask. <clears throat> and I just feel a responsibility. I sat on the last interlocal agreement committee, as many of us I did, but not all of us. So I kind of represent a, a threat, you know, a link to the past in many ways. Um, <clears throat> it's my understanding that the monies collected uh, through the ILA agreement are time stamped to be used in some finite period of time. Is that correct? That is correct. And what finite period of time is that? No, those are collected yeah. by. There, um, there's not a, it, it, to be set aside. Yeah. And to be put towards a project when it when it becomes available. The, the statute used to require it within yeah. five years, but it no longer does. So does that mean monies can be put in the bank? It's, in it's, set, as, or? it's set aside until we until we use it. Right now we're showing, which I think uh, Dave was going to get to. The, the two schools are in planning and building phase in 29. And so, so there's never a totally cutoff date that you have to use those funds. Right, I so find we're, that hard we're, to imagine. We're showing it. We're showing it currently needed. No, no, but and used. So the state allows you to collect monies and never puts a deadline on the use of those funds. I, I just find that extraordinary in terms of well, it's not taxpayer money. It's it's mitigation funds, but there's no, I'm surprised, okay. It's their, it's their impact to the school system and how the new new development and is So let me, let me get to my concern. So I had assumed that there was some lengthy 
time period to this. And my concern is this, and it's just, it's, it's, no, it's the real world and we have to think this way. I wouldn't ever want a part of our decision to be based on funds that were coming up or due that you could use or lose, and we made decisions yeah. to use because, and, and we made decisions that we would, might not have normally made. Um, and again, that's a devil's advocate question. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we would, anybody would ever do that, but I'd like to know for sure that that's not a pressure that's on either this committee or the school district in terms of either planning to use funds or spending those funds. Um, Chris, you can correct me, but, but when we collect those mitigation funds, they are parceled out for either high school or for middle, so that's only what we can use those. They're earmarked for, for handling the development, but for the impact. for 10 of years or 50 years from now? We Until have, you show need, I would we think We have a to current build. need. So if we don't have so a current there's no need, dates. so I, I, there's a current I'm need. I'm just today. having a hard time with the with the future value of money. Money sits in a pot indefinitely. Should the need not arise, you've got somebody's money in a pot. I'm just uncomfortable with that. Well, we have to file the five-year work plan. Okay. Okay. And that's why we'll remember I said the next step so we're going to get with the work. So, Mr. Group. Whitson, maybe that's my question. Then yeah. I would never want to see your five-year work plan be created against the use of some large sums of money that are sitting there. You understand where I'm going with yes. this? And again, I'm, I'm a devil's advocate here. I just want to make sure we're pure yeah. in our decision making. Okay? Yeah. I, if I understand your question correctly, your concern is that if there is a time frame that we're pressured to build when we don't or need plan, it, or, or plan, plan yes. if we don't need it. Co correct. Okay. Or, or, or we might not have made that decision. Understood. Mm -hmm. that's Understood. And, and, and that's one of the reasons we did this study, is it is showing the need in the like five, six year time frame. That's not a long time in the right. capital planning world. But, and, and but in that interim, it does seem like it trends downward almost in some of the some of the forecasts. Is that is that the danger where like the technical that the word need is that the is that the impediment here? I, I totally hear what you're saying. And if that decline happens and for some reason it's Exacerbated for any reason is that is that a fear just uh, just for sake of again these are all snapshots in time yeah. we check the data monthly with every staff sure. in here we we follow it. that's the whole beauty of this mechanism mm -hmm. is it gives us the ability to check so I mean this this the the the, the convening of this meeting is, is uh, light years ahead of where we were of course yes. I, I applaud the district and everybody for putting this together. This seems like a good moment, <clears throat> even though I'm off track just for a minute, if you'll indulge me for a moment. There was some discussion at the conclusion of our ILA meetings uh, last year, whenever it was, about a committee to oversight the spending of the funding. It's never been made clear to me, and I don't- A half know, penny. No. No. He's talking, no. About the impact He's talking about impact fees. Impact fees. Oh, I thought it's I, never I thought been made we... clear to me either who that committee is, how it convenes, what its membership is, or any of that. It was sort of talked about that the I, I don't know if the public was mentioned, but there was going to be an oversight, and everybody was 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 good about it. But I, I what I'm asking is. Does that dovetail with what we're doing, or is that something unrelated to the ILA committee? And I'm not sure anybody's been able to give me an answer yet. Well, Ring a bell? I, I wasn't I, there, but yes. I, I will say this, that remember I mentioned that the working group was gonna get together next? Yes. Check the October count, right? We, we provide similar data to that group, and we you know, report what's being collected, those kinds of things okay and of course every permit that comes in we talk with the staff and there's an impact analysis that goes back to that developer mm -hmm. okay and then we have the phased payment option some of the developers so well, I'll just write you the check now some of the developers pay the 30% yeah. and we track that okay right and so uh, basically what we do is watch the mechanics of it. The oversight of the funds yeah. is the responsibility of the school board as I understand it, but because we have formed this group, we will work you know, with all of the other jurisdictions hand in glove as, as the funds. Yeah, so it, it, it's still a little uh, ethereal. 
Um, I don't. Uh, I see a member of the chamber here. Do you have any input into what that discussion was? Uh, nobody has a, a good enough memory. Mayor Alfin, I'm looking at the minutes. Oh, okay. and, and there's no reflection in the okay. minutes no one about this, this discussion at all. Mm -hmm. I know that we had a conversation about well, having sure an did. oversight, and we've actually we built that policy about it for the half penny sales tax. But I don't. I don't recall okay. for this. Not that I'm a. I don't think no, anybody no, no. would I'm be opposed to, to that. Trust me, I'm not trying to do something new. I'm sorry. I. I, I but I don't I see it in the to minutes. It. Uh, well, I'm just, I'm just looking at, at the agreement and then the cover letter that went, went into effect uh, when we voted. There are a couple of comments in there. The first bullet says, "Staff of the parties will meet in March and September to share information, <coughs> facilitate the planning and educational facilities, make recommendations." Report. But it also, we have the Oversight Committee, us, we mentioned that, and then we mentioned the Working Group. Um, okay. That's that's all I, that's I okay. said. I don't know if that works. Let me withdraw my comment because uh, I'm grossly outnumbered here. <laughs> well, we're just trying to take I'm the I'm trying to find No, I'm trying to find it. But yeah, okay. Work. Impact yeah. fees were regularly part of the agenda meetings, right? Yes. Yeah. Summaries periodically of, of impact fees. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's. Okay. Data that's readily available, yeah. whether we make it part of our proceedings, is I think part of our peer review. Good. Okay. All right, so everyone um, has, uh, we've been around the table. I see public comment is available at the end of the meeting. I'm a little bit uncomfortable since we're, I think we're, we're moving forward pretty quickly right now. Uh, would anybody object to if I asked the public if uh, there's any comment at this point in time? Is the meeting over? Are we done? No, we're not done. No, we're, we're not done. I'm yeah, just, I'm get to the uh, like I need the board. I need consensus on the uh, uh, letting the public have comment at this time. Well, why don't you we know, follow, don't follow the agenda? You want to wait? Okay. Yeah. Mayor Alvin, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, I'm obviously uh, newer to all of this, but and I'm I'm probably not going to use the right word, but the conversation feels passive to me. Like we're going to wait and see what's going to happen versus the spirit of controlling our own destiny. Um, and I, again, I'm going to go back to Mr. Young's comment of who is Wagner County? You know, who, who do we want to be? Who do we want to attract? Um, I know Advent Health is a, a big part of our community. Do we know as they are interviewing doctors, um, nurses, from out of state, for instance, what feedback those candidates are giving of why or why not? Uh, are they moving here? What uh, what do they think about our schools? Um, uh, I just, um, you know, I think about communities that I'm aware of, like in Nocatee, Florida. People are chomping at the bit to move into that community because of its schools, because of, because of its amenities. Um, I think of a Peachtree City, uh, Georgia, uh, that has you know, 100 miles of golf cart paths. Again, great schools, um, and people are, are and I think Peachtree City, Georgia right now has like 30 homes on the market because no one's leaving. Uh, they love it so much. And so um, I guess my, my question is just, when you guys all meet together, because when you look at who's at, at the table, I mean, this is, you know, these are representatives of the county. Is, is there ever a conversation of you know what Mr. Young was talking about? Or I know that rest of you, you talk about going out west. I know you certainly have a vision. I know you certainly talk with uh, the people here in the room. But um, I'm just curious why that's not a bigger part of this conversation. I, I absolutely agree with you. The only question I would would ask back is, so this is this is the interlocal agreement committee, which has a, a specific duty and responsibility. The question you're asking is much bigger than just this committee. This committee is really to oversee the agreement itself. Now, we have the ability to um, alter or, or accept the agreement um, as we go forward, which would have some effect on that. But um, I, I'm not sure that this committee has been offered that responsibility or or ability at this to time. me, it's not mutually exclusive, right? Yeah. So no, I yeah. guess that's why I bring it up is yeah, to no. say if we say mm -hmm. we are going to, you know, be a even more of a master planned community, if we are going to be this, then it's kind of in the spirit of field of dreams, right? Build it and they will come. You know, to me, it's just um, 
to me it's not unrelated, right? Like it, it should be part a little bit no, part I, of the I like your reference to proactive. I, 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 I do appreciate that. And, and and I'm not suggesting that this group should be a part of that. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not prepared to say that this committee has that authority yet. But Just to I think you're a hundred percent right. So when we were in the height of growing, we used to all meet. All elected bodies used to meet on what a quarterly mm -hmm. uh, basis mm -hmm. to talk about how we can share resources, not duplicate resources and efforts, and how we can have like a larger conversation. And that is exactly what I think you're kind of talking Mayor about. To pick up on, on what Dr. Conklin was, no. was saying. And to, I hope, answer your question. We, uh, as a city, asked Palm Coast, Vanel, and Beverly Beach, yes. uh, to meet to discuss where are we going? Who are we? How are we going to help each other or not help each other? Perhaps we should improve, include the school board. Please do. We have not done that. Yeah, and, and, and my hesitation uh, is met, we may not have everybody at the table yet. Because, for, uh, just as an example, you don't have the sheriff here, which is always going to be a, a critical part. And there are other, perhaps, folks that we well, just, just don't have. We're talking about planning and infrastructure and sharing resources. And public safety is always going to be the right, Absolutely. But I'm just saying yeah. at that point in time, remember when we used to have yeah. those conversations? So the, the, it was a great benefit. The spirit to of collaboration. What, is the vision, yes. what do we want to be for Flagler County? Okay. And that, I think. Um, we're not doing Sally that. Hunt. Yeah, I am. Oh, I know okay. who you are. <laughs> I, I keep, things are getting more formal around here. So this time, um, I, uh, Mr. Sherman and I, Commissioner Sherman and I will bring it up at yeah. the next collaborative meeting. Thank and you. And see that, including the school board, and I think that will address Good. your that, concerns. That's it does not belong at this particular. No. Appreciate it. Yeah. Commissioner Vance. Yes. I would just say, Brian, we don't want to have objective creep here. We have a specific purpose for the meeting. Well, I think your points are well addressed at our upcoming comprehensive plan public meetings. The city is going through that purpose, that process. So is the county. And, and those are the opportunities where the entire public has the chance to, um, to affect our growth, our patterns, and what we are, what we become. The school is, is part of that. I, I appreciate you allowing me the, the time to ask the question. Oh, absolutely, and, and we appreciate the input because it, 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 it helps us another step forward. I think it, it, it truly does, so I appreciate that. Mr. Mayor, there were two uh, attachments or appendixes mm -hmm. that were part of the um, ILA report. I'd just like to highlight one of those was Appendix B, which um, shows the number, this was as of, this is a current um, information, but it shows the total enrollment as of October. We do this e each October, and then as developments come in and we get reservations, we reserve seats for those students, right. and then as um, developments receive uh, COs, we take away those seats, and so it's a constantly going up and down. And so um, the numbers that we have, there is a reserve student stations that we have, and I think uh, it says 2,432. That's not reflected in the Davis demographic numbers. That's just, that's just the en enrollment. And then the Appendix C has where we have, where we're showing um, where our planning cycle is for the new high school and the new uh, middle school shows it at 2930 which is five six years away but with reserve seats that could move that to the left um, uh, so I mean it could come soon it could come sooner but that's where we have it on our so so are there are phases that are, are not points moments of, of points of no return in other words it's still dynamic based on uh, the data correct and you watch the data, and it's a lot of moving parts that affect each other. And Mr. Mayor, I also point out a fact to Mr. Sullivan's excellent point of all the hard work that went into this. We do actually have where, we're, where we program mitigation payments in the ILA as an agreement, and it's on our five-year work plan or set aside, not spent until an improvement's identified that satisfies the demands created by the development that, that someone's coming in and making the proportionate share. And if you recall, we all 
we, we wanted to have the pay and go system here so that developers could pay the impact and then be allowed to proceed. Sure. Yeah. So it, so we have and, we and have le addressed it here. Legally, you guys did a great job with the language, but so from from the other side of that, and everybody at the table understands this. If you have a, uh, a significant delta in the interest rates, that your your development needs may change dramatically, and that's out of our control. Yeah. But that's why you watch the data as often as you can, because that's completely unpredictable. And who knows? But that certainly will stop a project or, or accelerate a project um, and change the phasing on your chart. This is how the this is how Flagler County decided how to deal with that yeah. issue of impact, and we're right. following what yeah. we all yep. agree yep. to. That's the best we come up with. Yes, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, on the economic side, I, I think as late as the beginning of our discussions last year. We were talking about that addition onto the test. High school was like originally thought maybe eight million dollars. I remember that. I mean, seriously, yeah. it actually was yeah. twenty what twenty-three yeah. million. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. So you have that factor too. So you have the factor of inflation. Inflation. Yep. And that's not always going to be with us, but it is a big factor. It is. It is. Uh, um. Okay. So we've been around. The, yes, sir. Mayor. There's one. There's one business that's. Um, keeping up with the growth in Flagler County. And I can honestly say the storage facilities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's keeping it. Uh, it's right, though. We need, right. we need to get their data. I think we need to get their data. And now tires. Good point. You know, Mr. Young, you're, you're, you're uh, completely correct because so that's an indicator. You know, I'm a commercial they bring no jobs. Only no, no. one person is there. I'm a commercial realtor, good. and I will tell you that they have a a, an organization nationally that they have the best data that's out there because well, they are just plain not wrong yep. and, and they don't build any of those things without knowing that they're going to hit a, an occupancy um, you know, close to their 100 percent they just they, they're just never wrong with that yep. they're really good at it the other interesting question I had is and I think uh, I think you brought it up it's not, um, the Somebody said the birth rate is increasing. It would yes. be nice to confirm that with Advent, because I'd like to know where all these babies are being born. I think those well, are the actual data. It's yeah. actual data from the health department, department in yep. Davis Pool. Yeah, I'd just be curious to know where they're being born, because it's not here. Well, no, it's St. Augustine. Yeah, it's out of county. <laughs> just a question. OK. Um, all right, so we've been around the table. Now, would you like to take us through the? Yeah, item six is the yeah. report that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. If you care to, excuse me, approve it now, or Take it back to your jurisdiction to your pleasure. So, I'm, if I may, I'll speak first. Okay, I would be uncomfortable um, if I were not able to take it back to my fellow uh, council members to have a discussion at my board, unless I'm unaware of some urgency. Um, I would feel more comfortable it's sharing this with my city council. Yeah. Just a requirement of the ILA that was put Yeah, no, no, no. So, and now everybody's free to speak. I'm just, I'm just one. So. Anybody else? Yeah, we feel the same way. Yeah, you do. yeah. I mean, it, that's fair. It would make sense to review this closely. And I think, so to your point, yeah. engaging the rest of our councils and commissions in this exercise, and this is one of the ways to do that, to bring them into the fold on, on how big a how big these decisions really are. They're not really just about disagreement. They go well beyond that. And I think that you get a chance to engage your fellow board members in the discussion, uh, council members, commissioners, and on and on and on. I think that is important. And I think that fosters the concept of collaboration. I would look forward mm -hmm. to the future invitations wherever we may go to all work together. And I would go a step further. We also, as hard as this is, we also have to think regionally. If you confine your thought process strictly to the boundaries of your county, I think you're going to be short-sighted. Because I think we are going to become a regional destination in a variety of different ways. And I think we have to begin. I just don't think we're ready for that yet. No, no, I know. But as leadership, we, we need to begin to think that way. It's a little scary. But I think we have to start thinking that way. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, let's, in small let's bites. In, 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 in small bites. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. If, I, I always do this, do this last time. If we're going to do this, uh -huh. then I think we need to put a deadline yep. on when, when you have to get yeah. back. And that's not 
here, but I think we should have a deadline. So, so, it well, doesn't so let's just let's just kind of pre forecast the next business meetings of each of the municipalities and the county would be during the month of September. So if we were to come back in October, assuming everybody can get it on their agenda, but I would think that even if you made it your um, commission uh, member, council member comments at the end and bring it up as an item if you can't get it into your agenda, that should allow everybody enough time. But that's going to bring us up against the new data. Right. So right. that October might be, that might be a really good time to come back together. So when will the data be available? Let's put it back on you. We typically do the count is like mid-October, our count is in there, and then we need several <coughs> days after that, to, so it would be the end of October. So on or about the fourth week of October yeah. into yeah. the first week of November, how's that for a hard, uh, a hard stop on when this uh, next meeting would be? To, yeah, to, I kind of agree to with, agree with October, the, uh, the data in October. Yeah, to agree or, or change the ILA. Would that be acceptable to everybody? I don't think that's taking the can down the road. Yeah. 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 Like 25th. Mr. Mayor, the other thing that factors in this is our um, is our work plan that the school district does. Yes. Um, typically that's due uh, to DOE on the 1st of October, but DOE is always late with allowing us to access that data, at least they have been for the last five years that I've been here. Um, so. I mean, we might want to wait until we have the ability to look at the work plan data as well. Even better. Um, so, I mean, that could be in if, November. So if there's no urgency, and when I mean urgency, if we're not delaying decisions that will cost money, um, you know, our time is the public's time, so we'll come together. I just want to make sure that there's not something that we are not aware of that we would be costing ourselves or the public uh, more money. So like I we, say, if we get the working group together towards the end of October okay. or beginning of November, Good. all the comments could be due by then and then we would pull it all together and bring it back to you. Any objections from the staff? I'd just like to have a specific like one November. Yeah. Yeah. When, when does that usually come out, Dave? They Roughly. normally try to open it up for us to review in September, but that's so not been So we figure late October, so. Yeah. Okay. Maybe the second week in November, we think we can make So Dave, uh, November 15th? That's not. Honor about. But that works. He doesn't uh, care, he just wants no, to date. No later yeah. than, no later. How about in the minutes, no later than November 15th? Yeah, that's fair. Well, that's November 15th would be fine. Okay. That works. These things and they grant. It'll work. Consider it a tattoo. Consider it a tattoo. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and that meeting, Mr. Mayor, would be for the purpose to take a look at uh, the five-year work plan One. and then our count numbers, our Two. enrollment numbers, and to approve or that is make correct. recommendations right. to the three, ILA report. Three major items on that agenda, correct. I think we're all in agreement with that. I agree. This thing, I'm sure that, but that's the, yeah, it's got the work. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, I mean, we, have, we have a working group meeting. Right. We have a working group the, meeting that would vet all of that. Yeah, the no, purpose. No, no. So you'll, you guys so you'll all, have it. That's for you guys to work out. Right. Once you have those, that's fine. Okay, so we'll be able to then formalize it's tight. I, I, I understand, this, but we can't let it creep any further. Yeah, like, yeah that's like, fine. Like, get the feedback from everybody. Okay. And then yeah. what comes to us at that meeting should be the final but report. If yeah. I could get feedback right. from each of the jurisdictions by the end of October for the report, then we can bring all so the other elements. So uh, be more specific. Feedback, uh, help me with that. From your commission. No, no, but what feedback regarding yeah. on the the ILA report? The so this report, this report. The final report. Yes. Sir. Yeah. This so report. Wait, wait. So on the this ILA report. agreement or on, on the, the data? report? On this report. On the report that's in front of you. That you're, that you're, you're going to share with you. For the record, I think it says report. what it is. Is the ILA oversight committee 2023 annual? Yeah, that's it. August 23. That's that it. has to be yeah. approved. So, what do you mean? My, so my concern is, so we're asking for comments on the report. On the draft report. Which which do, which may figure into the agreement that we're going to either accept or alter. No, we're not touching the agreement. The it's agreement not the is agreement. The, it's the report. It's the report. required by the agreement. Understood. But that data would 
could potentially have an effect on the ILA could. agreement, correct? It could, But that's already okay. in the, the ILA agreement is based could. on, on, on the data. when the committee comes back okay. together, you'll discuss that. Yeah. And it's but an automatic, okay. right? Yep. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all going but back to our municipalities. Hang on a But that's automatic. Yeah, yeah it's automatic. automatic. Yeah, there's you nothing have we have to approve. No. And what, I'm not sure what you would, the data, the data is, apply, is applied through the agreement, but I don't know what you, what would you change? I guess what are you? You know, I mean, I have other uh, council members, and they may they, they may well interpret the data very differently. Wait, I want to be very very crystal clear here. The ILA is not up for change. We're not looking to change the ILA. All we're saying is, by statute, this annual report has to be approved. Understood. You're all saying you want your commission's feedback yep. on the annual okay. report, not the ILA. Which is the, which is the pillar of Correct. support for the ILA. Correct. Yeah. Correct. The so only I, thing that I would happen in regards to the ILA yes. is if we meet the 500 student threshold, then it will automatically trigger any changes. That's already right. built into the ILA. Unless this committee part of the should ILA. want to change the ILA. And it's written into it's the it's part of the committee's rules part. and responsibilities. Yeah. Yeah. There could be recommendations right. from our governing bodies that could lead to I just a can't change jump in over the ILA. Okay, so so it's in, I'm trying to figure out is no, is that what we're putting on the agenda? No, is to reopen the ILA? No, 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 no. no. I, I our governing bodies could su could submit recommendations to the oversight committee members. And we would bring them back to this. And we may choose discuss. to do that, but that would right. be up to us. Right. Okay, I don't okay. want to complicate it. Okay, I okay. Just, I'm, I'm sorry. All right. I, I, just, to just, I just want to make sure we're not but to opening a can of worms. We could approve this draft ILA Oversight Committee annual report right now. You could. We could. We could do that. Yeah, yeah. we could. As a draft. All we're doing is extending it. Correct. No, we could approve it. Yeah, we yes. could approve it. We and, could. and all we're doing is extending and, the time. And I've not accepted the responsibility for my city to do that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is the data that has been reported through. Understood. All right. So I, apologies, I, I didn't mean to cloud it, but but I think we're okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're fine. Uh, but okay. and I so think everybody has the correct clarity, message. It's this, not this. Right. Correct. Yeah, no, that's all. Yeah, that's that's part of the meeting. Okay. That's today's meeting. Yes. This is what no. we're getting. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now where, yes. Last, yes. where are we on the agenda now? If I, if I think. Okay. The, we're any at new business? Number seven. No. We basically finished with number six, if you are finished. And now we're moving to number seven. And I'd like to ask if Clyde County has anything to report or comment on at this point. Um, I would say no. I'd say no. Okay. All right. And then we'll go to Palm Coast. Any updates or I would I would defer to staff, please. Yeah, just real brief. Um, you know, we provide this uh, Palm Coast uh, 2022 annual report. It's an annual growth report. We have it on our website, but it's something that we provide to flagger schools every year to be part of this process. So I just, you know, one thing um, reviewing the um, report here, I heard, I, I remember hearing something about 14,000 <coughs> units are being built. So I think. Just to clarify for some of the folks in the room, it's, it's not actually 14,000 units being built, uh, but it's it's entitlements. So there's a there's a big difference between entitlements and what's actually being built. So just what was that? I didn't hear that very well. There's a big difference between entitlements and what's actually okay. being built. Okay, I just want to clarify that. Yes. So from our from our growth report, and it uh, has a lot of good data, but just basically in 2022. Um, City of Palm Coast um, permitted uh, 1739 single family detached dwelling units, 346 single family detached, and multi family dwelling units, only about 300. So, how many so kids? Is, year, how many kids is that? That was a total of 2,385 units Mr. last Wilson, how, year. How many kids okay. is that? 24, 24 per 100. Yeah. Okay. So, this year today, uh, we did a little bit of calculation since last October. October, we were about 971. So, what is that? Roughly 120 units per month. Sorry. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. You're good? Uh, Bernadette, do we have anything?
outstanding. Please, please, please. please. Yes, that's yes. That's we, we, we would be very interested. Thank yeah. you. Does that, uh, I think, I think we've, uh, we got everybody? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then if uh, we have any public comments. So the, let me Or the next, uh, next meeting and then we'll, yeah. so I think we've talked about it a little bit. I'm sorry, so what's next? The next oversight meeting, uh, I think we business. already kind of yeah. decided so that. We did that. Any, yeah. any new business? So new business, let me just go around the table. Is there any new business to be? I think we, we, yeah, we probably did it. I feel like we, uh, I'm not done, uh, Sally, with your with your comment yet. I have to work on that a little bit, so I appreciate that. Um, Mayor Elman, may I just real quick, um, uh, because the words that I use are a lot of times under scrutiny. I just want to clarify for everybody, I wasn't suggesting that this committee, uh, that this group would discuss the future of Flagler County. I think I was more suggesting that I don't see those things as mutually exclusive, that um, in order to make these decisions, where are we headed, right? And you brought up storage lockers, right? If we are going to be a county of storage facilities, that, in my opinion, does not attract professional families. And so as we talk about the space that we will need in schools, to me, we need to know, Marilyn, not that we're deciding that here, but like, where are we headed, you know, under your leadership and others as a, as a county? I don't know if that makes sense, sure, but I just you, want to you, clarify. You reinforce the from. point that, that I think that we would all agree with, that comprehensive planning, I think you used the term master planning, comprehensive planning is really the tool that helps us get there, and I know that both the county and the city, um, I'm not sure, uh, you're either there or will be there, that's where those discussions absolutely must happen and that are open to the public and all of the necessary stakeholders. They take time, they, actually quite frankly, they should be ongoing all the time. There's never such a thing as you start and finish, I don't believe. I think in today's world it's, it's a process that always goes on. And I think we're all in agreement with that, so I appreciate that. And I that. won't bring it up again. Well, well, no, 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 no. But in, in, in to follow up on Sally's comment, I, I would hope we're invited to the table. Of course. Yeah. So because I can tell you. We need uh, to be at the table. We do. So nothing, none, of, none of this will, none of our future growth will be, in my opinion, completely successful without the best possible school district that we as leadership can possibly deliver. I would agree with you. No mistake good. about it. That sounds we good. would agree with you, yes. All right, so with that, I would ask the public at this time if they would like to weigh in with any comments, if they have any questions, we're happy to uh, talk about it. Yes, sir, please introduce yourself for the record. Hello, everybody, Michael uh, Shimento. You recall that you were working for you know, the business groups and some of the developers. Just uh, questions that we'd like to have some follow-up. Uh, first, um, in June of 2020, the school district had reported Davis demographic report, very similar to the one you guys looked at today, to their school district. And the one they have today, that Davis demographic data, like it's about three years later, and it's very different, and we're trying to figure out why. For example, your generation rate per 100 homes in 2020, that Davis report was about 14, 14.5 uh, in your impact fee study of last year was 19 and now this year it jumps up to 24 and that's important because your generation rate that you're looking at obviously have an impact on mitigation payments right and how we go that so we're trying to figure out why there's such a almost a almost doubling about 70 percent increase in generation rates between those two reports put forth by Davis uh, in addition if you look at the 2020 Davis report I think on page 24, 25, 29, Davis in 2020 had projected that the school district in 29 would be about 12,700 students. And today they're projecting that it's gonna be about 16,000 students. So within two or three years, the Davis demographics is significantly different than what it was back then. Uh, and we're just trying to get some clarity on what the difference is. Uh, the gentleman here that I don't know, I'm sorry. Oh, but James. James, nice to meet you. But you, you said a really wise thing, we thought. When we were going through this, we demonstrated or showed to the district to consider the bubble, and we called it the pig moving through the snake. And if you look at grade by grade by grade, back, 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 you'll see that there appears to be just that, a bubble, and you're building for 8th, ninth, and 10th grade. So 
we ask you to reevaluate that and look at that bubble because the last thing we want to do is have 21 schools <coughs> at some point in time have the need for eight. Um, another question was, you know, you have your five-year capital improvement plan. And if you recall, a year ago, you all had in the five-year capital improvement plan a middle school in year three and a high school in year five. Remember the charts where they were projecting out the cost and it was 93 or 160 something million dollars collectively. Well, apparently that's changed. There's no more middle school in the five-year capital improvement plan. And I think Ms. Massaro said earlier today that, and the numbers show that you don't plan on building a high school until about 2029. So if those are the cases, if that is the fact, that's fine. Those projects should be taken out of the capital improvement plan, right? And if they're not in the capital improvement plan, mitigation can't be charged because mitigation can only be charged for identif identifiable projects in the capital improvement plan. You know, one of the things that we've noticed with the school district is that they have historically kept a capital improvement plan in the five-year plan and they just keep it pegged at a year three or year four. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be where we're identified in year five and we're moving it along to year one and once it gets to year two, it's supposed to be funded. So if you all could take a look at that because again, if there's no projects in the five-year capital improvement plan, there's no need for mitigation because the law says you can only charge it for identifiable projects. And then lastly, um, your reservation. I mean, this was one of the things that we talked about before. And you talked about having 1,600 uh, seats reserved into the future. Well, that reservation number is only good if your generation number is correct. If your generation number is incorrect, then you're reserving students that will never be here. And so if you look for the last three years or four years, your actual creation do not match the generation rates. So we're concerned that if the generation rates aren't correct, we're planning on spending millions and tens and if not over $100 million on schools that may never come to fruition, or if they can even be built because we know you're not gonna build a high school unless when the day you move in, it's gonna be about half to 60% full. So. These are uh, five questions that our group would like to have some get some answers to or some clarity. We'd be happy to meet with Dave or anybody Thank in the you. school district. Mr. Mr. Witts, did you have note of those questions? Uh, I'll get back. Take some notes. So, so, so you'll get them. Mr. Smith, uh, yes. I would, as the answers are available, if you could copy the, uh, copy our group on that. I yes, mean, sir. Uh, uh, so we want to make sure that we you know, attend to the public questions. Are there any other members of the public that would like to address the committee at this time? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Greg Blasse, President and CEO of the Palm Coast Flagler Regional Chamber. Um, I think there are three questions that you as elected officials who are appointed by your boards to come here and bring back to your boards this interlocal agreement need to have answered, which is how much money has been collected over the last year through school impact fee, uh, through, excuse me, through mitigation payments, how much has been committed because as it was mentioned earlier, some of these developers are paying the amount flat out to begin with. Others are paying as you go. So we have a, an amount that we actually have in the bank. We have an amount that has been committed through agreements. And the big question is, and I don't know how you could go back to your jurisdictions and, and look at anybody and, and talk about being educated on this issue if you don't know how much we're supposed to be collecting. We're collecting and exacting tens of uh, hundreds of thousands of it's, it's I've heard a number in the audience it was over 10 million dollars I don't know what the actual number is how much money have we collected from the construction industry to build schools um, and at what point in time are we going to stop this process this crisis mode process because what we're doing here is not normal and you need to know it what we're doing here through this interlocal agreement is saying we have a crisis in Flagler County. We have so many student, so much student growth happening that we need to exact millions and millions of dollars from the business community in the form of the construction industry to fund future schools. And we don't know how much we've collected, how much has been committed, how much do we need to collect, and when are we going to get out of this cycle? The normal cycle, for those of you that don't know, if you've not been here before, if this is your first year, is when a builder comes to town and pulls a permit, he pays an impact fee. This process that we're engaged now from the private sector, I call it crisis mode because it means we don't have a handle on the growth. We didn't properly plan as a community for these future school, school sites. 
So now we have a crisis, and now we have to enter into the interlocal agreement. We have to take millions of dollars from builders and developers years before they normally would pay in a normal setup. Um, so you need to know what we're doing here is not normal. So um, the comment was made that we're good and, and we're in a sound position. From a, from a government perspective, you are. You most certainly are in a sound position because, as you heard earlier, you're exacting millions of dollars from the construction industry, and you may not ever have to use that money for 5, 10, 20 years, and you can sit on it for that long. Folks, I left Tallahassee because I saw sausage made, and I didn't like what I saw. And what's happening here is pretty similar. The difference is the building uh, industry and the business community, we have to have good schools. We want good schools. That's why we, even though we had a fight last a year ago, we ultimately agreed that yes, let's move forward with some of these transparency items. And yet here we are at the first meeting and I'm not hearing any of these transparent facts that are out there. Maybe it does exist in some report that you have, but me as a private citizen couldn't even find that agenda on the internet. Couldn't even find a backup documentation on the internet. So the idea that you would vote, I'm so glad you're not voting on that today because I haven't read, read it and I'm, I'm like a gadfly. So I'm sure the public hasn't read it. Um, so the idea that we're implementing a system to fund future school construction with the idea that we as government, you as elected leaders, might not know how long that process continues for is crazy to me. The economic impact from the private sector on this is that the, we, the private sector looks at this setup that we have now of um, the interlocal agreement with the concurrency as we don't have our act together as a community. That's how the business community looks at it, okay? Um, in addition to that brand issue that we have, what the actions that we're taking, forcing the construction industry to pay millions of dollars years in advance when they normally would, will increase the cost of housing. So that's, that's an economic issue that we're trying to solve now with uh, lowering healthcare professionals here to build that industry up so people can actually afford to live and work here. So to me, uh, I think those are the big questions. How much have you collected? How much is committed? How much do you need to collect? And when the heck are we gonna get out of this process? If the, if the answer is 10 years, it's 10 years, that's fine. Let's be honest with the people. Let's be honest with the business community about what we're doing here. And instead of having this meeting where it seems almost like a rubber stamp deal, we need to have a real conversation about what, what decisions you're making and your boards are making. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll, I'll pause my time. I'm glad to hear that there's more meetings coming up, but very, very concerning that these questions weren't really focused on. Because I don't know how you sign off on an interlocal agreement that takes money from private businesses and puts it into a government bank account for an undetermined amount of time. So thank, thank you. you for your comments. I, <clears throat> I would object to your choice of the word rubber stamp. I think each of your questions was asked during the committee meeting, which is the reason why we are moving forward, going back to our municipalities. But I appreciate your re-asking the same questions again. Um, with that, are there any are there any other members of the public that would like to comment at this time? Seeing no one, I'll come back to the committee. Any final comments for today? I, I really. Please. I don't know if you want to go around the table or. You know. I have one, but yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I was just going to say, uh, just to address some of the comments, I want to commend um, Greg and, and Michael for doing a great job representing their clients of developers and, and the construction industry. I think it's important to understand some of the comments being made are just simply disingenuous. All of the impact fee information, all of the money that has been collected is all publicly available. It is on every single agenda every single month. It is in this packet of information sitting before all of you. So to say that? that we are excuse, excuse me. So to say that we are not being transparent with the data, impact fee data is shared every single month in a very detailed report for the school board. Um, we are not proclaiming that there is a crisis because we went through rezoning. We did uh, the moving of sixth grade back to elementary school to deal with exactly what we had in front of us. Today, you have heard several times, we are not saying we are in crisis mode. We did several of those items 
to do exactly uh, what we're doing to mitigate with some of the capacity that we had at elementary level. We are saying that we do see the need for a future middle school. We're not talking about predictable numbers. We're talking about birth trends. We're talking about actual numbers. And in regards to the number changing of the students being uh, generated by the housing, that is going to change based on the number of homes that are being built. So that is going to generate a different number. If you're generating less homes, you're gonna generate less students. But isn't it for one community? Yes, sorry, yes, yes. Um, but I, I just wanted to commend them on doing a great job representing their clients, but to, again, it's disingenuous to say that we have not been transparent. Uh, Commissioner Sullivan, well, I was no final make, comments? Just on, on, the re, on the Oversight Committee annual report, yes. we're gonna take back to our uh, fellow uh, officials. Mm -hmm. In there is is a summary of impact fees collected in 2022. Yes, sir. We know that. Summary of mitigation fees collected in 2022, and then up to date through uh, I guess June, uh, January to June for 23, which is not complete figures yet. So I understand. So anyway, there's a chance there. I mean, I don't know how many people actually are interested in those numbers, and and. Obviously, our, our chamber chair is interested, but I think there are Not ways important. It's our job to make them available. Right. Yeah. Commissioner yeah. Dance. Yeah. I was just going to say, this is basically the one-year anniversary of a renewed focus on this collaboration, mm -hmm. um, where everybody's getting together to look at the numbers, the growth numbers, to be able to properly plan. So I do think, and it's written in there, that if, um, if our governing bodies have recommendations to make the ILA better, we're going to bring those back and have that discussion. Thank you. We include some additional data points that we want to see. Um, but I think this is a good process, and I'm, I'm glad we all had this conversation. And Thank obviously, you. there's some things we still need to do. Sure. Okay. I'll share comments with you. Okay. okay. If I agree. Okay. So, well, just to reiterate, we can't tell exactly how many kids we're going to need seats for. People have less kids, kids, people have more kids, fewer people actually buy all these homes that they're planning on being built. And it's not a finite thing. It's not like something you can draw pretty charts about. It's all, we hope this is gonna happen. But if it does happen, we have to have the school there for the kids to go to. Very good. Mayor, uh, may I ask yes, um, I just want to, um, I, uh, Colleen is a board member, Cheryl's a board member, I'm a board member. Um, so I'm gonna speak my, my own comments as, as one. Um, Lashaka Moore uh, speaks a lot about flagging forward. That's her focus. And I just wanted to bring that to the table today. Um, I very much want for the board to have a really great relationship with the chamber, with our land developers. We are, I kind of keep, I know this is the same kind of conversation for me, right? But we are one community. So in the spirit of Flagler Forward, again, I'm a newer board member. I have seen what appears to be a we versus them. And I I hope that in the spirit of Flagler Forward, uh, that that can be improved. And I think uh, Colleen has mentioned inviting us to the table. Um, I would hope also going forward that school board members are considered Always. equal parts. I think you have consensus here from everyone, of course. Thank you. So thank you for that sentiment as we get to the conclusion of the meeting. Just one thing. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to thank everybody. So Because, yes. you know, it, it takes time out of your days, I know, and you've all arranged your schedules to be here. It's not the most pleasant thing to discuss, but I'm glad that you're here and I appreciate your support. So, and on top of that, so let me thank the public for taking the time to come, but especially let me thank staff. Um, there is an awful lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, and we really can't sit here and come up with these, you know, high-level, high-minded thoughts without all of the um, detail that staff puts in. So I thank every single member of staff including the lawyers. I appreciate all the work that you have done. <laughs> so with that, I would um, I would conclude the meeting. I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So we have a motion, second, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah.